This is the story of John Arnold, the king of natural gas. Growing up, I was, I was always good at math. And so I was the kid that was in fourth grade and I'd go to sixth grade math. And that kind of continued through my educational life. And so I thought, you know, that I'm this really smart kid who's going to go to Harvard or MIT. Uh, but I was lazy, and the teachers didn't like me because I was a, kind of a smart aleck kid. <laughs> and so I think when I went to apply to college, uh, I got a lot of no's. Uh, and so I ended up uh, not going to the Ivy Leagues that I really wanted to. I went to Vanderbilt, which now is a very competitive school. Back then, um, it, it was, wasn't was that hard to get into. And so that kind of put a chip on my shoulder. Right? And even going there, like, I didn't have that much interest in in getting the education, I wanted to get out. And so I did Vanderbilt in three years, and I, I want to get out and go into the business world. And I didn't even know what what business, right? but I had read, um, I'd been reading the Wall Street Journal since I was in high school every day. Uh, I read Liar's Poker, so I kind of knew somewhat about Wall Street, and I knew that that was a kind of quick way to go make some money. And so I thought, like, that's, that seems like a good path. So coming out of Vanderbilt, like, okay, I'm going to go try to work at a New York bank. So go through that process. And again, Vanderbilt at that time, kind of a tier two, tier three school in terms of the selective schools. And so there wasn't this big pipeline from Vanderbilt to Wall Street. Got a couple interviews, but they said no. So now I got a really big chip on my shoulder. And so best job I got was company Enron. Um, in college, I didn't know what Enron was. I'd never heard of the company. They started to research it, and they called themselves the, the investment bank of the energy industry. Right? And they had this big trading floor, and um, one of the trading magazines magazines ranked them as the number one energy trader and marketer. Right? <laughs> and so I literally, I think I walked graduation on a Friday, and on Monday I was starting on the trading floor at Enron. So I, I'm on the oil trading floor for about a year, about six months into it, there's a big blow up um, on the floor. You get a new head of the, the desk comes in and he actually sits right next to me for about six months, pulls me aside one day, says, uh, I'm about to blow this desk up, right? I really like you. It's not gonna be good for your career to be on this desk. Right? You gotta find someplace else. Right? You can either go to the oil trading desk in London or you can go downstairs and trade natural gas. And so here I am, um, I'm 21 still, because I'm still thinking I'm going to be in this company for two of the years, maybe three years, go back to business school. Yeah. And, but I, I probably should learn this nat gas business while I'm here. And so they put me as kind of smart young kid that didn't know anything about the natural gas business to go assist an older gentleman who knew a lot about the natural gas business, had been there in gas for decades, but knew nothing about trading. I'm, I have junior responsibility for a trading book within 12 months of graduating college. Within 24 months, I'm the head trader on the Texas basis book. And then and within 36 months, I'm now the assistant on the NYMEX book. At this point in John Arnold's career, he is earning millions as a trader. His strategy at Enron was to use his knowledge of Enron's operations to trade natural gas derivatives. During Arnold's time at Enron, he reportedly made $750 million in legitimate profits at a time when the company's core business was making a loss. This made him the king of natural gas trading. Enron's management were so desperate to keep him that they gave him a bonus of $8 million only days before the firm filed for bankruptcy. So Enron you know, filed bankruptcy December 2001. Right, so shortly after 9-11, the financial mm -hmm. markets freeze up. It was kind of, um, and, um, you know, I, I'm trying to decide what to do. Right? And I decided, I, this is my time. I, I've gotten paid well. Um, I'm single. I don't have kids. I have no responsibilities. I've got some money in the bank. I want to go take a swing at it. Right? I want to go run something. Mm -hmm. And again, now I'm still kind of 27. But I'm like, you know, um, you know, I think I'm king of the world. But it became clear. I started getting calls um, from people in town, some people out of town saying, you know, if you go do your own thing, like, I'm interested in investing with you. So this is kind of first quarter of, uh, of 2002. And 
then the the stories on Enron start getting really bad about the second quarter. So first quarter, I'm out setting up my business. I go yeah. rent office space. I start hiring some people, start buying computers and raising money. I think I, you know, I think there's a hundred million dollars of demand for this product. And then second quarter comes right? and I've signed the commitments for the lease and I've signed commitments to hire people and bought furniture and, and the rhetoric on Enron just was horrible. And so everybody, all the investors or almost all the investors said, Hey, you know, like, I'm not sure everything's kosher over there, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure, you know, there's started to be some of the scandals in the, the power trading side of Enron mm -hmm. where you're hitting the papers. And so they all said like, you know what? Oh, I'm not going to be day one, but you know, I'm going to stay in touch. Right. So I took 2 million of my own money. I had, um, my clearing firm had this program where they, if you clear there, they had this emerging manager where they put 5 million. So they stayed. And I had one other investor, a random guy out of Chicago who put in a million and I got $8 million. I'm like, that's what I got. Like I got to start. So first three months I, I'm doing it. I, you know, all three months were 30 something percent returns on capital within kind of six months. They, I was sending out the monthly letter to all the investors that I had thought were coming in on day one. And so a lot of them start calling up and going, eh, maybe I'll send you some money. Start buying some way out of the money calls um, for March and get lucky, right? Get this cold snap forecast late February. And the market goes from $6 to $11 in two days. Wow. <laughs> and at the time I have maybe 50 million um, under management. And in those two days, it made 70 million. In 2006, the fund took a contrarian position on natural gas prices, betting they would go down. Simultaneously, a gas trader at Amaranth bet that prices would continue to rise in the opposite direction. Arnold was correct and netted his company just shy of $1 billion. Arnold's fund made net returns of 317% that year. In 2007, Arnold became the youngest billionaire in the U.S. In May of 2012, at the age of 38, Arnold announced his retirement to his staff at his New York hedge fund, explaining his decision to pursue other interests.